all good morning good morning it is a cloudy day but it's okay i feel really good in my spirit hallelujah i got a um i had a good night's rest and i feel good i'm on my way um to take care of some things this morning appointment this morning so i'm feeling really good about it um god has given me was to come and some um, the joy of the restoration that's going to come from it so I am I am looking forward to it I am I'm actually really grateful and so as I you know you know as I travel it's a good time for me to talk so I'm just here to talk and I will put all the scriptures and all that good stuff in the description below when I post it and um, of course um, when I you know, I always upload this to my web page, um, and then it'll it also posts on my social media. But when you go to the, when you actually look at the blog that I'm putting in, it'll have more of the study pieces and more information. But I just want to right now, I just want to have a conversation. You know what I mean? Um, so what we're gonna talk about? We're gonna. Um, this is part two, right? Part two of <laughs> the um, the stages in the four stages in the process of suffering that ultimately lead to uh, salvation. Um, <clears throat> so, part one, we talked about brokenness, the broken, a broken heart, and how the broken heart is the first stage that begins the process in suffering. Of course, so this is where the act comes in, right? Or whatever is going on, whether it's a moral or a natural um, evil that causes the brokenness in your life, um, regardless, the brokenness has taken place. And so now you are in position to be multiplied by the Lord. Because remember, um, one of the analogies that I gave was and when Jesus fed the multitude before the it was the, the one lunch, the child's lunch with the you know just the two fish and five loaves of bread. Um, it wasn't, it didn't become enough to feed the multitude and have you know baskets left over until it was broken. So brokenness is a measure, um, a divine measure of how God multiplies. So godly mathematics is a little different than what we're used to, right? So, um, but it was in, it's in the brokenness. So, um, we're going to move on to the second phase, which is very, very much so cro uh, closely connected to the broken heart. And that is, oh, I'm sorry, let, let me add to, why do we need the heart to be broken? Because we know that the heart is just is deceiving, right? The heart is deceiving. It's the, the evil Jesus said, it, it's not what goes into the body, but what comes out of the heart. So, it's a part of the sinful nature that we are in, and due to the iniquity that is in, that came from the fall in the beginning. So, naturally, you know, our carnal selves, our hearts are deceiving. So, you know, you hear the cliche, follow your heart. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I beg to differ. I will argue, we need to lead our heart with the word of God. And so, um, just know that the heart, it has to be broken away from the sinfulness of the flesh. And um, God does that best, hallelujah, through the problem or through pain and suffering. And so this is why it is number one. So today, we're going to talk about the second one, which is a contrite spirit. It is the um, godly sorrow. It's what ushers in um, through from the broken heart is where you get to a place where you're able to see truth without any blinders on. And that's when you're able to see your sinful nature. nature. And through uh, contrition is that, is that process of of examining and bringing forth remorse, the the error, the the wickedness of who you are, 
not what they done, not what the world has done, but who you are, what is a part of you, and to allow that clarity, hallelujah, because it is clear, it is crystal, godly sorrow, it's like looking into a mirror, it is very clear, it is a clear reflection of who we are and what God um, wants us to see about our nature to, that brings us to a place where God, that godly sorrow can come in and dwell with us and clean up that broken heart. That's when the, the it, it, it will open up the wound. It's kind of like when you get a cut, you have to put air, let air get to it, right? You don't want to cover it up because it doesn't heal as fast. It's like, it's cool to clean it out, right? You need to clean it out with some kind of you know, antiseptic or something like that, or water at least. And um, then you want to allow air to air it out, right? That's that truth. You want to allow it to be open and the, the, the contents of what's inside to be exposed, okay? Exposed so that the Holy Spirit can come in with that humility and that um, the godly sorrow that's that's not just saying I'm sorry but it's when you realize your error of what you've done and who you are in your simple self and you are you're open you've acknowledged that what I've done was not just against myself or others but ultimately it was against God it shows you your wickedness for really who you are and that begins with um the broken heart so when you go to the text and you guys when you watch this um look at i'm gonna look read psalms 51 and so i'm gonna paraphrase because i'm driving and obviously i can't um read it but when you're done when you listen to this video or um i want you to you know to read psalms 51 so ultimately what's going on this is after the prophet nathan has expose King David of his sin, his murder, rape pretty much is what it was, of Bathsheba and the murder of her husband. Um, once he had um, taken her for himself and, and, and um, basically it was, it's, it's rape because she couldn't tell the king no. So it really is without her consent so I'm going to call it what it is. And she became impregnated and he was trying to get to cover up his deed he tried to get you know uh Uzziah to come and um sleep with his wife from Babylon's but he was such a good general that he was like no 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 I'm not gonna uh, you know partake in any kind of pleasure while my men are out there on the front lines and away from their families right so you uh he he it's, I always get this name wrong, Uriah, Uzziah, um, one of them, because one of them touched the Ark of the Covenant and died, and then the other one was this guy. So, I will put the right name in the bottom, because <laughs> I forget. Anywho, um, so he put David orchestrated for his demise by putting him on the front lines of battle, and so that he would be murdered. And so that happened. And so um, Nathan approached him, because the Lord revealed this to him, to the prophet of the Lord, and Nathan spoke to him with a parable, basically. He said, well, what would you do, King, if someone stole um, from a land or, or from someone else and then orchestrated it for it to be, you know, for them to be, you know, murdered? And he went all the way off. I would have him killed and I would do this. And, and David was so upset and he not even not realizing that what the story was really talking about was him he was the he was the actual um main character in this story that nathan was 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 speaking to him about and when nathan revealed it, he said well king you are that man and right then and there david that was when the brokenness the broken heart happened when he realized of what happened of what he did of his sin of his error now from that um psalms 51 goes into this contrite spirit so david is crying out to god he's 
broken, he's remorseful, he has regret, but it doesn't just stop there. So a lot of times we get into, we do something and we we feel regret, but we never get, and we have remorse like, um, it feels bad. It feels bad and we shouldn't have done that. Um, but we don't get to the place of godly sorrow. We don't, we don't get to a contrite heart, a contrite spirit. And so in Psalms 51, there's this language of just complete, utter failure and brokenness of and the wickedness of David, of his choice of what he if what he did. And it's not just so he's saying, you know, well, I'm sorry to Bathsheba, or I'm sorry uh, for what I did and keep it moving. And I want to feel better about who I am. I want to be able to sleep at night. But he realizes that he is wicked. And what he did was deplorable. And it hurt God. And he was concerned in the language of this text about God's reception, receptiveness of what he's offering, of his offering to God. So he was concerned about what he could offer to God. And he said, which is very important, he says, if I had an offering to offer to you, because mind you, David is one of the few that is going to be a king, priest, and prophet. He's going to operate in this Melchizedek order, which is very much a foreshadowing of King Jesus. But that's another video but he's up in his in his um, priestly ship if you will in his in the priesthood that was that's within him the priestly nature within him he's he understands that there's there's a sacrifice that needs to happen so that's what godly sorrow or, or a contrite spirit would do it would put you in a place where you know you need to give back there's a sacrifice that must be made in order to make it right between you and god not just laterally to the person or to the image of what people see you as because you know nobody likes that when people know because now nathan knows what he's done and and i'm sure david is you know uh, all these people there are so many other people in his court that are hmm, oh now yeah, she was in your arms she pregnant and like, okay they put two and two together so he doesn't like the image that he's that he's you know giving off to people which is one thing that i noticed that a lot of people when their guilt sets in and their regret set in they're concerned about what other people say about them, how other people see them and that's greater than their concern about what they have done to God. And that's the difference. That's why contrition is important because it plows the heart. It plows the spirit. And it allows this openness, exposure of who you are to the Lord that you take, that you acknowledge and that you take ownership of. And you get to a place of godly sorrow. Father, forgive me for what I've done to you. Because ultimately, my sin has been unto you. Jesus says later on in the New Testament, he said, um, give to the least of these. What you do to others, you have also done unto me. And, you know, you, it, the, the text says in the Gospels, it says, well, when did I give to the, you know, poor? When did I go visit those the prisoners? When did I clothe those who were without the, the poor? And God said, when you did it to other people, you have also done so to me. So it is a, connect, a correlation between what we, how we treat people, our loved ones and those, our brothers and sisters, that is a, there is a correlation in a relationship that that is a reflection of how we treat God. So that same notion is true. How we love our brother, sister, our brethren is, and the, the, Jesus says, how you love yourself, hallelujah, is a reflection of how you love God. So if there's these so many correlations 
that are moving laterally and internally. It is an inward look in, in when, you, when you're dealing with the broken heart and you get to the contrite spirit. It's that inward look of your heart that's broken, that's exposed now of all of this wickedness. And it is showing you or revealing to you what you've done unto God. And it gets you to a place to be sorrowful, sorrowful, okay, sorrowful, not sorry, sorrowful of what you've done and who you are, what your wicked self is towards God. And that is a completely different place that regret alone and remorse alone does not do it has to go further in the exposure that takes you beyond what other people see and how you feel about mm, the choice that you made but how you feel or what you understand God sees in you or what he felt about what you've done about your wicked state and that's totally different. A lot of people don't get there. And they get to regret. And they say I'm sorry. Or they apologize. For what they've done. Because it hurts them. You understand? It hurts them. They can't sleep at night. Because they're full of regret. And guilt. Because guilt is just. People don't like that. But guilt is just. So when the guilt comes in, um, condemnation is not. So people confuse the two. I thank you, Holy Spirit. Some people feel guilty about certain things, and that that's the enemy is ushering in condemnation. That you are not, you are not uh, truly in guilt worthy. But it's just the enemy is using condemnation. That's different because guilt is not condemnation. Okay, um, I want that to be clear. Guilt is just. So anyway, back to what I was saying, when people get to that place and they're, because they, they can't sleep at night, they feel bad on the job, they, they're, they're paranoid, they feel like everybody's seeing their evil, everybody knows what they've done, they feel embarrassed and all those things. See, that's just surface, that's just regret, that's just guilt doing what it does. That's guilt is sets a playing field where the Holy Spirit for those who have a relationship with Christ the Holy Spirit would come in and nip and nudge you in your spirit through conviction that is will be evident in guilt. Conviction is what the Holy Spirit would do would nip you to get you to a plate place of a contrite spirit that you can see your error and you can open it up and be exposed before the Lord. And allow a godly sorrow to come in and cleanse, open up that womb, expose it, run some water, the Holy Spirit through it, and air it out. Expose, re reveal the truth of who you are to God. Regardless of what you think people see and what, what part of, regardless of what people say, that you get to that place that God can come in. And that godly sorrow will cleanse. Because there's a cleansing with godly sorrow. And so this is where David is. And he and he and then in chapter in, uh, chapter 51, verse 16 and 17, 16, he's saying, uh, he's talking about the sacrifice. What what sacrifice can I give? There are none. He said, There are no sacrifices that I can give. There's no burnt offering that was, will be pleasing to you for the wickedness that I've done the wickedness of me and then chapter and then verse 17 says but oh God my love oh God I present unto you a broken heart a broken and contrite spirit I offer unto you that it is pleasing to God that he will not despise why is that that is powerful to say the least but the main thing, it, it is a foreshadowing, absolutely, of what is necessary with Jesus Christ when he comes 
as our Savior, and He bears the sin. He bears the iniquity of the world. In half a he mile, keep right at the fork to continue on I-95 Business South, US 301 South. Follow signs for I-95 South, Fayetteville. Okay, yeah, okay, I'm traveling. Never mind her. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so he's, he's he, he offers his broken Keep right arm. at the fork to continue on I-95 Business South. Offers his brokenness. He offers his contrite spirit. A broken spirit becomes a sacrifice. Hallelujah! Ain't that good, y'all? Compare when you when you look at what Jesus did for us. That's why through Jesus Christ, Hallelujah, we are able to all of our wickedness and our sinful nature was placed on, a, on the cross because He was broken in spirit as well. He went through these same stages that we're going to talk about. Um, in this series and ultimately because he goes through it he opens up at the end he gives a purpose behind suffering because those that way those stages of suffering are what led to salvation that he provided for us on the cross and when we are found like him in Christ like Christ Christ types that we will that we are we too will go undergo the same process that he did on the cross and um, in our suffering to lead us to a, a place to receive the free gift that he's given us. And so, no, it's not what we go through that merits it. That doesn't, that is not what um, gives us salvation. Jesus already did it. But we will share with him. Hallelujah. We will share with him in crucifixion so that we will share with him in the resurrection. Amen. So we'll talk about that once we get to the end of the series. But I just want to throw that naked in there because there's a piece in the Psalms, in Psalms 51, that reflects what David is doing. This reflects the same order of Melchizedek. This same, and I'll talk more about that in the end. The same order, the same priestly um, kingdom mindedness and prophetic um, call that we will all, those who are called, because the, the word says that um, we are all priests in the, in the priesthood after Jesus Christ, right? We are all called to be priests, right? So that is to offer up something, right? A sacrifice. And Paul says it best in the New Testament. We're no longer burning bulls or whatnot. And even here, David is foreshadowing what's to come. Because he said, that's not, those, those burnt offerings are not going to be enough. But I have to offer up my spirit. And Paul echoes this but says, we need to become a living sacrifice. Our living, our lives, our spirit will become a living sacrifice unto the Lord. So we'll deal with that later on once we finish the series. But so now David is in this place and he's offered up his contrite spirit. This openness, this wound has been opened up and there's a cleansing of godly sorrow. Godly sorrow, contrite spirit, or unanimous in their meaning, um, in the way in which I'm teaching. And it is this contrite spirit that allows this godly sorrow to move within the heart that's crushing in the spirit. And let me tell you guys, it doesn't feel good, okay? It doesn't feel good, but it is absolutely for your good. And it is a cleansing of your spirit is a cleansing that will get you to the next phase or the next stage in this process of suffering and this is the whole intent this is why i had to mention you know the correlation between or the parallels between what happened with david and what will happen with jesus christ on the cross because what did the cross offer salvation and how do we get to salvation when we confess right that Jesus is Lord and he is the son of God and we repent right this is the process that's going to get us this contract spirit this broken heart contract spirit prepares us for a place of repentance which will be uh, stage number three in this suffering process that leads to salvation so i hope that was um encouraging um although 
it sound, it's going to be painful. And we all will experience it. There's just no way to get around it because we have to deal with this flesh. We got to deal with our sinful nature. It just is what it is. But God promises you that he will be with you. And when I gave my, in my testimony of, you know, what I've gone through very recent and why God, it, it, like my whole life has been a testimony of suffering, right? This is, that is my mandate. That is what God has called me to as a prophetess and as a minister, teacher of the, of the Lord, of the word of God is this very, you know, um, principle. And this is how, this is my contribution to, like I said, academically, um, this is going to be In a quarter mile, turn right onto East Russell Street. <laughs> I'm always there, guys. Um, but it's also, it's also um, helpful for me because it puts, it put in perspective a life of suffering that I've lived, right? And um, there's some other principles to that as well that that's off subject, but um, when in this this particular season that I'm, you know, coming out of, I'm 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 actually in the stay, the fourth and final stage, which is forgiveness. Um, and I would we'll talk about that um, when I get to that to that stage. But when I was in this contrary spirit, and God revealed so many things to me, my wickedness, and throughout the process, and I talked about doing the breaking, God said. You know, he, he constantly told me to stop praying against it, stop praying for the pain to stop, stop praying for it. And I was like, what? And when I, he said, just embrace it, just endure, because that's what God called me to, just endure, he kept saying. And the Holy Take the Spirit, next right onto East Russell Street. The Holy Spirit was with me, and he said, I'm right here with you. He was right there with me, and I allowed the pain to come in that I could Continue endure. on East Russell Street for three quarters of a mile. And as I endured, oh my heavens to Megatroid, it hurt, but the Holy Spirit never left me. He was right there, and I could hear him and feel him. He's like, he was right there with me, and then he whispered in my ear, and he said, cry out, as the word says, and um, I cried out. Lord, you said you have come for the broken hearted, for those contrite in spirit, which he absolutely did on that cross. And so Jesus, the word of God, as I cried out, I felt him come in and he just lifted the burden off of me. Hallelujah. He lifted up all of my wickedness. In a quarter all mile, my turn right onto Dick Street. All of my error, all of my sin, not what was done to me, but mine, because that truly what was, what was um, burdening me, burdening me, it was my wickedness, and I could feel the spirit Take the of next God right onto Dick Street, then your destination will be on the right. He lifted it, and I was, it was amazing, and I was so grateful um, and I understood. And so as he lifted it, and I was able to, and, and I was that open, it was, it was exposed of who I was. And then God, oh, hallelujah, the, his spirit just cleansed me, just washed through me. And I just cried, I just wept, and I just allowed the spirit of truth to just wash just just run through that that godly sorrow just cleansed me and I was it still hurt there were things that I still had to deal with for sure um but God was with me and they were exposed and there was no more um condemnation it was beautiful and I, and I just I thank God for that because that was the moment I'm backing up guys I got a backup camera um, this backup camera is everything dude got the birds out real amen go Nissan um, there we go it was a uh, amazing and I just thank God for it um so that's contrite 
spirit or godly sorrow. It's a cleansing agent. It's a painful but beautiful process that is inevitable, guys. It is absolutely inevitable. But it will. I've never felt closer to God in all of my life. Um, never. That moment was life changing for me. And it prepared me to um, plow the ground in my spirit for me to be able to repent. And so that will be next. Uh, um, the next time. That's the next. The next word. Head south on Gillespie Street toward East Russell Street. Then turn left onto East okay. Russell Street. We're here. So I just bless you. I thank God for you. Let me pray really quickly. Father, we thank you for what you've done, Lord God. You are such an amazing Father. You are so wonderful, Father. We just bless your mighty name. Lord, just strengthen those who hear this word, Lord God. Let it nestle down in their spirit, Lord God. Let them grasp hold of it and never let go. In Jesus' name, reveal any and every step, Lord God, as they've what they've already been through, Lord God, and just give them peace in knowing that you are with them. These are the things that we come to you with, Lord God, and we, we rest knowing that you have already worked it out you have already whispered into our spirit that you are with us and that this is a necessary process in jesus name we honor you we head south you. on gillespie street toward east russell street and we give you all the honor and the praise in jesus master's name amen so um put your comments in on my web page or on youtube wherever and let me know if you like this um this teaching and stay tuned for uh, part three, which is repentance. And we will um, go deeper. We will go deeper. Yes. In this four stage process. Hallelujah. Of suffering that is necessary. Hallelujah. To receive and walk in salvation. Amen. Amen. So I love you with the love of the Lord. Until next time. Be blessed. Amen.